thing. Okay, cool. Let's make something awesome. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a kusudama. This. Oh gosh, my head's not even in this. <laughs> I'm so tall. Let's make a kusudama. This is a kusudama. This is a giant kusudama. I use this as a tree topper this Christmas. It was pretty fun. So yeah, what you'll need, trash bin, optional, glue, not optional, a protective placemat, definitely shouldn't be optional, but I guess it is, a bowl to put all the little folded sheets in, sweet tea, oh, that's, that's optional, but it's, it's delicious. I like to keep a scrap piece of paper so I can wipe off the glue as needed, string, so that you can... I'm going to make it out of old book pages. So you'll need a book if you want to do the same thing. This stuff is called Sort Quick. It's that stuff that they use at the cash register. They rub it on their finger and then they can grip paper or plastic bags, whatever. A little easier. You'll need either a paper cutter, which I forgot to grab. A paper cutter. Or if you don't have a fancy schmancy thing like that, you can use scissors, a ruler, and a pencil. So, let's get started. Okay, first things first, I'm going to cut a length of string. String, gosh. Yes, I did grow up in Oklahoma. Could you notice? So, a length of string, and I like to make it 11-ish inches. It seems like a good size. So we're done with the string. Set that aside, and then we'll get started cutting out the pages. Dang it, my head is just cut off. Okay, so I'm just gonna rip into this thing. Special thanks to Hannah for the books that she decided to leave behind and let me make stuff out of. Love you! Okay, so, oh, I hate doing this. I love books, this makes me sad. Ugh. All right. So rip out some pages. You really want to have pages that have ooh, full text. So like that isn't always the best looking, but sometimes you can incorporate the chapter number and that looks cool. So I can usually do three pages at a time. Oh gosh. And we'll be cutting out 60 squares in two by two measurement. Also, I don't like to have too much of the margin in the page, so I tend to cut in just a smidgen. That's where the handy dandy bin comes in handy. Woohoo! And again, I'll cut up from the bottom and possibly the top, just so there's not a whole lot of empty space when I fold. All right, well, I'm assuming that you guys know how to cut things out because you guys are smart. So I will see you after I cut out all 60 squares and then tell you what to do from there. Hey, okay, so I have 60 sheets of paper plus 18 extras, just in case there's some words that I don't really want to show up for people that like to look close at the... If you're using scrapbook paper, you'll need two sheets of 12 inch by 12 inch. Make sure that it is 12 inch by 12 inch though because some of them that come in the books aren't exactly 12 inches and you may need more than two pieces of paper. Please do not use cardstock. It will hurt your fingers like nobody's business because it's so hard to fold. I much prefer the thinner scrapbook paper or books. So what you do is you fold up and then unfold that, turn it, and make a plus sign in your fold, essentially, is what it will look like. So then you'll unfold that again, and then flip it over and fold the points up, and give that a nice good crease. So from there we're going to fold those points up to the center, and you'll have a little teeny tiny square. Like so. All right, this part is the most difficult part to understand on paper, so this is probably why you're doing the video. 
you'll unfold this a little bit and line up this crease with this fold. Right like that. And then give that a good crease. And you'll do that to the other side. You'll have this. From there, fold down these points so that they're equal with this other line. And do the same to the other side. And then you'll fold these in again, right like that. So when you're finished, you'll have a square on the back. It'll just look like a square. When we get to the gluing process, you'll glue this edge to this edge right like that. Try and be careful not to crease this edge. It's actually better if it's rounded. It looks really pretty when it's rounded. If you have a small and flexible page, you can skip this step here. So you'll just fold up this way and then fold the points. Like this. Well, hey there, it's time to glue these bad boys. I use Fabrifix. I got it from Hobby Lobby for $6.99. It's basically like hot glue that is not hot, so it's safe. Although, it will take the nail polish off if you get the glue on your nail polish. So be careful of that. Right. So when I helped out in a kindergarten class, let's put this little dude back in the screen because he's cute. That's what half of one looks like. With a little desk ornament, if you like. When I helped out in a kindergarten class, the teacher's phrase for gluing was, a dot is a lot. I thought that was... Here is a little dot. Right there. That's literally all I'm using. Then I take the tip of the glue dispenser and spread the love. And I like to set this down on its side. And then... Hold that together for a bit, fancy, and do more than one at a time. So again, a dot is a lot. And then spread it around. Set that sideways. Yay, I remembered! And then fold that together. So by that time, this one can be let go of for a bit. So then I hold it like so. I'm just going to show you how to glue five, and then I won't make you sit through my rambling any longer than you have to, I promise. For these three, we're going to start gluing them together. Again, you just need a little dot, spread the love, and then put two together. You want to try and make these edges match nicely. All right, so then dot is a lot and it's exploding all over us. And then spread the love. Take number three here, add him to this, squish it just a little bit, hold it. Okay, so that one's staying. So we'll set that aside. And then you'll glue two together. Hey! Okay, so here is my happy little army of my Kusudama threes and twos. So, if you have already gotten bored and do not want to fold more than five, that's totally fine. You can make a cute little whatever, a little flower out of it. So I'll show you how to glue these into just fives. So first, you gotta drop it. No, I'm kidding. You, I like to squish these so that they're a bit more rounded. And that's why it's important not to crease where that point is. So I will add a dot, because a dot is a lot. Are you guys sick of me saying that? I'm so sorry if you are. And, and then set the glue, and then squish the two. Ha ha, it rhymes. All right, so do that. And then I like to let that sit for a bit. Dang it, why am I rhyming so much? And add another strip of glue or a dot and spread the love on that side and put those two edges together and you have a cute little flower ta-da 
So I now have these five groupings, these petals. So now I'm going to glue them to each other in groups of two. You use a smidgen more glue for this part because, oh, I forgot to do the other side. Because I want to make sure that it stays where I want it to stay. And then try and line up those corners. So now everybody has a friend. Let's glue them into groups of four. So we'll put glue here, here, there, and there. And then pair them up. So then there's a happy pair. So there's another pair. So then you want this guy in the middle. And then put glue all along this area. Like so. And then take these two and make them friends. If you are impatient at this point and don't want to make the whole kusudama, you can do just a half of one. And I think that looks pretty cute too, because it's like a little desk ornament, decoration, whatever. You can also punch a hole through one of these guys and then hang it, like on a wall or something, because it'll lie flat, which is kind of nice. Had that at my wedding. Oh yeah, I made a hundred of these as wedding favors, one per family, or group, or whatever. I actually have a few extras, but these were really fun to make. It took a long time, but I enjoyed it. So once that sticks on its own pretty well, you can set it aside and move on to the string. I'd grab your happy little string. I like to fold it in half and then tie a knot in the same place a couple times just to give it a good size thickness since this is just crochet thread. Ta-da! I found that 11 inches and then fold it in half is a good length if you're going to hang it on a tree or like a Christmas tree or whatever. It's just a good length. So from there, flip the first one over so that your second one has time to dry. Put a huge thing of glue, a huge dot, and then from there, squish the knot into the glue, like so. And then I like to cover that with even more glue and just secure that in there to make sure that it's not in this ridge right here because the opposite side will be glued there. Whereas if you have it in this type of a crease, it can move a bit more freely. So from here, I'm going to smother this side in this awesome glue. So then match up the hills and the valleys and squish it all together. And then I hold it on the opposite edges. Kind of straighten things out. Try and match up all those pretty points. See, there's our happy little friend that's free. So there is your happy little friend. Ta-da! So there you have it. That is how you make your very own Kusudama flower ball. I would really love it if you would show me pictures either on Instagram or Twitter. The links for my social media are down below. I'd love to see what you guys do. I'd be happy to answer questions and help you if I can. So please comment down in the comment section and we'll have a nice chat. Thanks for watching.